You there. Yes, you. Do you want to buy a new tablet? Are you confused? Don't know whether to buy one with Windows or with Android? What about a tablet that can run both? Okay then, hi then everybody, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and today we're going to be looking at the Onda V919 3G Air an Intel-based 9.7-inch tablet that dual boots into both Android and Windows 8.1. Like many Chinese OEM tablets, the Honda V919 Air is clearly trying to mimic the iPad Air. The dimensions are almost exactly the same as the iPad Air and its overall look is very similar to the iPad Air, even down to the bottom speaker grills that flank the micro USB port. The power button and the volume rocker are on the right hand side, just like the iPad Air. On the front panel there is a circular home button, again just like the iPad. On the back there is a plastic cover which when opened reveals slots for the SIM card and the SD card, and some metal strips, presumably for the antenna. Again the placement of the cover on the top edge next to the rear facing camera is very similar to the iPad. Of course there are some significant differences. First the Honda V919 shell is made of plastic. Second, the device is slightly thicker than the iPad Air. And third, the processor in the V919 Air isn't an ARM-based processor like the iPad or even the Nexus 9, it is an Intel chip. The result is that the Honda V919 can run Android and Windows 8.1, but I'll talk more about that later. One problem I did find with the design is that the circular home button is very sensitive. It only requires the slightest of touches for it to activate. What this means is that when holding the tablet in a landscape, my thumb kept touching the button and taking me to the home screen. This can be very annoying. At first, I thought that the tablet software was unstable and the apps kept crashing and dumping me back into the home screen. However, I eventually worked out that my thumb was to blame. Adjusting how I held the tablet finally solved the problem. However, even though I am conscious of how I need to hold the tablet, I still find that my thumb gets too close to that very sensitive home button. This tablet has a 9.7 inch display with a QXGA resolution, in other words 2048 by 1536. This means it has a 4 by 3 screen ratio just like the iPad and also like the Nexus 9. This translates into a pixel density of 264 ppi. Now some people prefer tablets with a 16 by 10 screen ratio because more of the display is used when watching widescreen movies. However, the 4x3 display ratio is certainly a popular alternative. The Honda uses an IPS display which yields good viewing angles. The colour reproduction is good and the screen is bright. However, one disappointment is that the tablet doesn't have a light sensor, which means there is no automatic brightness option available. As I mentioned earlier, at the heart of the Honda V919 3G Air is an Intel processor, not an ARM-based processor as found in the majority of Android devices. In this particular case, it is an Intel Atom Z3736F, a quad-core processor which runs at 2.4 GHz and includes an Intel HD graphics GPU. In terms of usability, the performance of the V919 3G Air was good. The UI always reacted quickly and games like Epic Citadel were able to achieve at least 50 frames per second. Video playback is smooth and I didn't experience any lags or annoying pauses while using the device. If you want more details on specific benchmarks, then please check out the written review. This tablet comes with a 6200 milliamp hour battery. It's hard to theorize about the battery life from just the raw milliamp hour number. Unfortunately, the battery life wasn't as good as I had hoped. For example, if I charged up the battery fully to 100%, rebooted the tablet to make sure there were no programs running, and then left it for a period of about 10 or 11 hours, over 30% of the battery was used when the tablet was sleeping. According to the battery diagrams, that 51% of this was taken up by the Android system. This certainly indicates that there is some optimization that needs to happen. I ran some tests to see how the device would do under different loads. And my test showed that you'd get 4.1 hours of YouTube streaming, 2.7 hours of playing a 3D game like Epic Citadel, and 3.7 hours of playing simpler 2D games. The speaker on the V919 is nothing special. It does its job in that it produces sound. However, don't expect anything amazing. Also, the speaker grills don't seem to have any relation to the actual speaker. Covering both grills only reduces the sound marginally. Here is a sample so that you can judge for yourself. The 
tablet has built-in support for 3G. For details about the frequencies and for various compatibility with carriers around the world, please check out the written review. As you'd expect, the device also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. The V919 comes with 2GB of RAM, which is the most supported by this particular Intel processor, and either 32 or 64GB of storage, depending on which model you buy. My test unit has 32GB of storage. The thing to remember is that the device comes pre-installed with two operating systems, Android and Windows 8.1. The internal storage is split between Android and Windows, with some space being used for the actual operating systems themselves and the remaining being divided up as usable storage between the two environments. Under Android, this 32GB model has around 6GB of space for installing apps and for storing your own files. Under Windows, the free space for Drive C was around 8.5GB. This means that the rest is used to hold the two OS's. However, the numbers don't seem to add up quite right, and I'm left with a feeling that there is a large chunk of flash memory somewhere that is not being utilised correctly. In terms of what is missing, this tablet is very short on sensors of any kind. It has an accelerometer, and that's about it. There's no GPS, no NFC, and no compass. For most people, this probably isn't a problem. However, many 3G-enabled tablets that are on the market today come with at least GPS, so that would have been a nice addition. The cameras on the V919 are very basic. The rear-facing camera has a 5-megapixel sensor, and the front-facing camera has a 2-megapixel sensor. Personally, I find the front-facing camera the most important on a tablet, as it's useful for video conferencing with applications like Skype. The rear camera is good considering that this is a tablet and it only has a 5 megapixel sensor. The colour reproduction is fairly faithful and the camera works well indoors and outdoors. Having said that, you aren't going to win any photo competitions with this tablet. Unfortunately, the front-facing camera is very bad. As you can see by these sample photos, the colours blur easily, there seems to be lots of distortion, and particularly in low light, there's lots and lots of noise. The bundled camera app is very, very simple, and offers little more than the very basic operations. If you do use the camera more than occasionally, then you'll probably want to install a third-party app. If you want to see more sample shots from the camera, then please check out the written review. The link is in the description below. The key selling point of the Onda V919 3G Air is its dual bootability. The device comes pre-installed with Android 4.4 KitKat and Windows 8.1 with Bing. Each OS has a way to cause the device to reboot into the other operating system. Under Android there is a OS switch icon on the notification blind and on Windows there is the dual OS switcher program which is on the toolbar by default. The supplied version of Android is fairly vanilla, except for the launcher. Onda has included its own launcher, which doesn't include an app store. Like the iPad, all the icons are on the screen, and you need to organise everything into folders. The Onda launcher also includes a theme switcher, which allows you to pick one of five pre-installed themes, including Funny Board and Childhood Dream. If you don't like the launcher, then the good news is that this is Android, and you can easily replace it with one of your choice. There are also a few included apps including a neat Wi-Fi configuration program and the LPAL configurator for Intel's always listening technology. You are meant to be able to set a voice trigger that allows you to wake your tablet using your voice. However, I couldn't get it to work. As for Windows, the installed version runs as expected. I won't talk too much about how hard Windows 8.1 is to use without a mouse and a keyboard, but that isn't the fault of Onda. I was able to install programs like Chrome and VLC without any problem and the default window camera app worked reasonably well with the rear facing camera. There wasn't a toggle to switch to the front facing camera, however programs like Skype found the front facing camera without any problems. Unfortunately some bits of the UI keep appearing in Chinese. Having fiddled with the regional settings etc, I thought I'd set everything to English, but still from time to time I get a window with Chinese writing in it. The tablet comes with a micro SD card slot and the card is shared between Windows and Android. This means that files copied onto the card in one OS are available under the other. I was able to install Windows programs on the micro SD card by installing them under D colon. However, there was no option under this build of Android to move apps to the SD card. You can get an Onda V919 3G Air from Geek Buying for just $225. That's for the 32 gig model. The 64 gig model will cost you $240, but it's currently only on pre-sale, but it will be available from February the 25th. The 32 gig model is available now. 
Well, there it is, a dual booting Android and Windows tablet. I'd love to know what you think about the concept. I'd love to know what you think about this video. Please use the comments below to share your thoughts. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Google+. A big shout out to my brothers at Android Authority, Jace, Joe, Josh, Lan, Kevin the Tech Ninja, Ash, and Taylor Martin. And that's it from me, and I'll see you in my next video.